Coming up on Sports Path, a big win for the Zephyr football team on homecoming night against the Saint, South St. Paul Packers. As they prepare for a big matchup against Tartan in a couple weeks. Now Tartan struggles against a Simley team. We've got highlights of their first loss this season. Hopefully they turn things around after that upset. Now finally, it's on to the volleyball court as Tartan manages to hand North only their third loss set on the season during a big 622 rivalry. We'll have all that and more as we take you down the sports path. Welcome back to the Sports Path Desk. I'm Sam Erickson. John Miller is out today, but I, so I'm flying solo, but I think I can Han fill things. Get it? Han solo? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> well, anyways, we've got a ton of highlights once again as we gather all the highlights from all over the Northeast metro area. So we got to get right into it. But before we get to those highlights, we got to start as we always do with our social media montage. All right, to start out the montage this week, we go back to September the 27th, where the Tartan football team had a little team competition the day before their big game against Simley. The competition was a hot dog eating contest. You see they've got all the hot dogs ready right there. And they had a coach competition as well as a player competition for the players. You see Solomon Whalen finishing his last hot dog right there, scarfing it down, taking a sip of the water. I'm not sure how many Whalen put down, but he got that one down. He's pretty pumped about it and put on his gear for the uh, hot dog eating competition. And then on the coach's side, you see Coach Lyle right there raising the belt as the champion for the coaches, well-deserving right there. We will see a little bit later in the show if eating all those hot dogs slowed the players down at all in that matchup against Simley. Now next, we stay right here at Tartan where the North St. Paul Polars came to the gym to play against the Titans in a little rival volleyball match. Now, of course, both schools part of that District 622 and even the ticket takers were rivals in this one. One showing support for Tartan, the other showing support for North. Always a good time for some friendly rivalries between the North Polars and the Tartan Titans. Great shot right there. We'll have highlights of that game later on as well. Now finally, let's head over to Matamidi where they have a fun homecoming tradition at the homecoming pep rally. Coach Mutzel handed the ball off to the cross, cross country team to carry it all the way to South St. Paul. The ball was then run back to George Smith Field at Matamidi for homecoming. At 16 miles to South St. Paul High School, I sure hope that those runners switched off because that is more than marathon distance to go there and back. Maybe next year they're going to play an out-of-state team for homecoming. I wonder what would happen if the cross-country team had to run that football all the way across state lines. Uh, hopefully, they're probably hoping for an in-state rival in that homecoming game. Well, folks, that will uh, just about do it for all we have here on this week's social media montage. Well, as we mentioned, got a lot of highlights uh, in this episode. Should we, we should get right into it. We're going to start with football. And, yep, there it is. Start with Matamini versus South St. Paul in that homecoming game. I think those cross-country runners brought the ball back. Matamini 3-1. There's Jake Arlinson, quarterback, getting Matamini on the board first as he dives over the goal line to make it 7-0 after the extra point. Arlinson now across the middle for Javon Hadley. And that big gain is going to set up Matamidi for another potential touchdown. This one goes to Michael Hersey. He goes right up the middle. 44 is untouched. And the Zephyrs go up 13-0 after, after the extra point was no good. Now pitch outside. Looked like the Packer player was maybe thinking about throwing the ball after that pitch. Carried a little bit loose. 
loses it. Ball goes into the end zone. Should be a safety after the referees talk about it a little bit. They'll touch hands atop their head. Safety is the call. 15-0, Matamidi. Matamidi defense putting on the pressure again as the South St. Paul quarterback does his best. Kirk Cousins not seeing the blindside pressure. Losing the football, and that'll lead to another Zephyr score as Arlinson carries it across the goal line again from short distance. Making it 22-0. Now late on into the third quarter, Arlinson showing off the arm strength, looping it into the end zone. Javon Hadley brings it down, a little baby jump celebration. And after the extra point, it's 29. Donut, Matamidi enjoying things at homecoming. Now run to the right, football again comes out for South St. Paul. They're not gonna get on the board as Matamidi falls on it and the Zephyrs take it big on homecoming, 29-0. So nice win there for uh, Matamidi as they improve to four and one. And they're gonna have a big one in a couple weeks against the Tartan Titans that may decide the conference championship. Uh, it'll be a great game, but it'll be tape delayed right here on SEC community, community channels, so be sure and watch. Now on to our next highlight, this one courtesy of Town Square Television as the undefeated Tartan Titans travel to Simley. And Simley, you see one and three, so Tartan looking like they should probably come away with this one. But Simley looking good here in the early going. Quick pass gets them up near mid, uh, midfield. I should say, not midfield. Now continuing that, another quick pass up the middle. And a nice gain, look at the tackle as uh, the seemingly receiver dragged down by the foot harshly to the turf. But the drive keeps on rolling, another quick pass from Simley gets him into the end zone and that'll make it seven to zero, Simley strikes first. Now later in the first, Tartan trying to get on the board. This is Dorian Singer. He'll eventually lose the ball when he gets hit and Simley's gonna recover, giving it back to the Spartans. Spartans looking to add on to their 7-0 lead. Now, luckily the Tartan defense is gonna come up big with a sack and that'll uh, end the first quarter right there. And Simley's still on their side of the field, but second and 10 into the second quarter. Quick slant pass again. Seemed to be the Achilles seal for the Tartan defense in this first half. Big gainer, 13-0. I like the little low hand clap celebration. Extra point is gonna be blocked. We'll see it right there. Play is dead. So it is 13-0 Simley. Now third quarter, stopping Simley on their end. Tartan breaks a few tackles on a punt, returning uh, returning that short punt, getting great field position down to about the 10 yard line for Tartan. Now this is Dang, the ball carrier for Tartan, goes up the middle, he turns to the right side, aims for the pylon, dives in for the touchdown, thinks he's got it, but the play's gonna be called back. You saw the penalty flag coming late. So we're gonna try it again. Now this one goes into the end zone. Singer reaches out with the one-handed catch. Looks to be beautiful at first, but falls to the turf. Dorian Singer, if you can get out there with one arm, you should get both of them out there. You might have had a chance to bring it in. And still with another chance, so turn desperately trying to get in. Not able to get it in there on third down and goal. They'll go for it on fourth. The Whalen pass up into the air, leaping. It's Antoine Kimmins bringing it down. They think they've got a touchdown. We didn't see it, but there's another flag on the play, and that'll bring it back. And I think Kimmins just became aware of it as you see the frustration. Final chance again, another pass. Batted down at the line of scrimmage. So a crazy few plays there, but the Simley defense able to stand after about six plays. Another punt, this one gonna be returned by Kimmins. He's trying to make something move, switch fields, but ends up going backwards, tackled back on the Tartan side of the field. Great play by the Simley special teams. Now Whalen's gonna keep the ball on fourth and short as Tartan desperately tries to get in there. Nice look as the ball ripped away. You can't quite see, but the ball did come loose. And Simley signals for it, they got it. And they got a chance to increase the lead. Can't do it, ball terribly underthrown. Antoine Kimmins first to it. Gonna try and do something that the offense can't and get into the end zone. Nice return, but a long way to go. And eventually Kimmins brought down on the Simley 40. This one is the Tartan trying desperately to get on the board. Deep pass, Singer brings it in, but on the wrong side of the out of bounds line, and that'll be an incomplete pass. Tartan again trying this one, a low snap. 
Whalen back. He's got it. But Simley is able to uh, touch him down right there, take him to the turf. And that will pretty much do it. Another desperate attempt to go deep will fall into the hands of Simley as they're able to play prevent defense. Simley's going to advance to two and three on the year after the surprising upset of Tartan. Tartan dropping their first game of the season. Unfortunate as Tartan had scored at least 38 points in all of their wins and other games on the season. You got to wonder if that hot dog eating competition kind of slowed them down. They did it the night before. Otherwise, maybe this Tartan team wanted to be undefeated. You got to think that coaching staff might think twice about doing the hot dog comp eating competition next season. But after that loss, we'll take a look at the Suburban Gray standings. Matamidi 3-0, but 4-1 overall. Tartan 2-1 in conference, 4-1 overall. That big story, of course, the loss for Tartan to Simley. Pretty inexplicable there as Simley only 2-3 uh, overall and would be 1-4 you know, and winless in conference had Tartan knocked them off. Tartan's going to try and rebound against Hastings this week. And, of course, we talked about tape delay. Matamidi versus Tartan right here on SEC Sports in a couple weeks. I think that one will decide the conference championship. Now jumping over to the Suburban Gold standings where it's been uh, a tough year for coach Gene Teiglin in his first year over there at North St. Paul. The winless Polars dropped to 0-5 last Friday, losing big uh, to Forest Lake. To, uh, Forest Lake 40-7. to Now coach Teiglin has a good opportunity to pick up win number one this week against Spring Lake Park. You see him there kind of in the middle of the pack of uh, the gray st uh, gold standings. We'll switch to another conference and another football highlight. White Bear Lake Stillwater. Stillwater hosting this one courtesy of Valley Access Channels. 7-6 to six as we're late into the first quarter with our first highlight. But a nice pickup there by Kevin Boeing on the short pass up the middle. Now we'll move on to the second quarter. Zachary Greibel up the middle for a touchdown. The Bears will take the 13-7 lead after the good extra point. On the next drive, Bears send Bryce Peters in motion to the far side. He runs the sideline for a huge gain as that Bears spread and hurry up offense looking good tonight. Immediately after that, Cooper Anderson goes up to up the middle to the Bears leading receiver, Dominic Smith, my man, part of the baseball program. He'll catch the ball, take it the other way, get into the end zone, and it'll be a 20 to seven lead for the Bears after the extra point. Another touchdown here, late second half, or excuse me, second quarter, still first half for the Bears. This is still in the first half. That one's Griebel again, it's 27-7. Second quarter, now Bears get the ball back right away. Less than a minute to go, jump ball for Dom Smith. Smith shows off that athleticism and he is pumped as White Bear Lake is gonna have a huge lead going to the break at 34-7. Well, we thought, as there's still time, Bears think they make the defensive play. These offenses were going crazy at the end of the second quarter. That is a touchdown. We're still in the second quarter. It does fall into the hands of the Stillwater Ponies. 34-13 into the break. Now third quarter, tip ball. Goes to White Bear Lake. Big interception as it looked like Stillwater maybe had some momentum getting that last second touchdown to end the first half. But the Bears are going to look to roll and check out this pass from Anderson. Dominic Smith goes up to get it. He didn't wait for the ball to come to him. You young receivers, go up and get that football. No surprise that Dom Smith got it as he jumped to be the first one there. Uh, White Bear unable to get a touchdown off of that, but they do get the field goal to increase the lead to 37-13 late third quarter. Ensuing kickoff, Stillwater trying to make something happen. Returner tries one side of the field, a little bit of hesitation as he has a lot of green onto the other side of the field, has the kicker to beat, able to get away from him and it's nothing but the pylon after that and into the end zone so a mistake on special teams from the bears as it'll be 37 20 will it as it's called back due to the penalty so it stays 37 13 Stillwater thought they had the big play thought they had another big play right there ball comes loose the ball runner just loses it with no pressure luckily Stillwater able to recover for themselves eventually leading to this touchdown up the middle for Will Harder. Now it's 37-19. Stillwater is going to have to go for two here as they're trying to make it a two-score game. They do, in fact, get in. 37-21, 16-point deficit. Technically a two-score game. But White Bear Lake 
liking their chances and they'll love them after the big interception right there. Dylan Larson picking that one off on the goal line and that would be it for your scoring as White Bear Lake takes the rivalry matchup against Stillwater. Big win for the Bears, man. This team keeps on rolling. We talked about they hadn't won a game since 2015. They're up to four and one now after the big win against Stillwater 37-21. And looking at what is now the Metro East in football standings, you see White Bear near the top, something we haven't seen in a long time, at two and one in conference, four and one overall. Now their upcoming opponent this Friday, homecoming. That game's gonna be right here on SEC Sports against Woodbury. You see them right above White Bear Lake in the standings, two and one in conference, four and one overall. But here's the deal, Woodbury, Woodbury has lost. Their only game was to Roseville, a team that White Bear Lake beat. And you see Roseville towards the bottom of the standings. So in this matchup, I like White Bear Lake's chances. Let's keep rolling, boys, and get it done. Get the big homecoming win. Okay, so that's football. Now we're gonna to transition to the other football, American soccer. We'll start with girls soccer Metro East standings where we see the defending Class A state champion, Matamidai Zephyrus, have lost a game in conference. Bummer. Uh, after losing last night, they are now five and one, eight and five overall. The deal is though, four of those five losses overall against two A, uh, Class 2A opponents. So this Matamidai team looking very good in the Class A division, still ranked in the top five, looking good uh, for the postseason. And I still think they're gonna make it into that state tournament. And they've got a great shot to repeat as state champions. They got Grace Paddleford, she's a senior now, leading the way, they'll be just fine. Okay, let's get into a highlight. This over in the Suburban East, I was there for that one. White Bear Lake, Mounds View, White Bear Lake hosting. See, Bears have a nice seven and four record. Uh, Mounds View at one, seven and one. And look at this, the long free kick from Erica Townley goes just over the net, hits a crossbar, just the wrong one, hit the uh, football field goal crossbar. So no goal there. Another shot from Townley, this one low, knocked to the side by the uh, senior goalkeeper, Duel from Moundsview. Now a little bit later, about 10 minutes into the first half, Duel for some reason can't handle the low, uh, the low ball, lets it get out of her grasp. And Anna Racine, number 22 for White Bear Lake, did not give up on it, got the scrappy goal to make it a 1-0 score to the Bears. No scoring the rest of the way in the first half, into the second half early, and another low one that Duel can't handle, and the senior lets up another easy goal, 2-0. Here's the shot of the night, Lauren Eckerly, not sure if it was a shot or a cross, but I think she'll take the goal as she just turned, fired it in on net, and it found the corner. And a little bit later, Cross comes in, and it's the leading goal scorer, Kayla Anderson, with her 16th, yeah, that's right, 16th goal on the season. The junior has been racking them up. She'll make it four for White Bear. That would do it for the scoring as the Bears take it four to zero. A nice shutout for the Bears defense, and they pick up another uh, win in the Suburban East. Very tough conference, but I like this Bears team as they've played tough conference schedule all year. They've, they've been used to it um, in past years and they'll be prepped for that postseason. Now skipping ahead to another White Bear Lake girls soccer game. This one courtesy of Valley Access as this was down at Stillwater. Uh, no score in the first half. We'll go to the second half where Dara Andringa from Stillwater kicks the corner and Hallie Peterson gets her head to it and nods it home for the 1-0 Stillwater lead very early into that second half, I might add. Uh, a little back and forth uh, later in that second half. Goalie comes out, Anna Racine there uh, in on the action. She won't get up on it. She gets up off the turf. Ball, I think, was still on line. Golden count, Racine able to crash in there, make sure it crosses the line, and it's 1-1. We saw it in the game against Mountain You see it there, Anna Racine, hustle award. And those goals are huge, they pay off. And you can see how it pays off right here as White Bear Lake was only able to net the one, but they get the big tie against Stillwater, a very good Stillwater team. Uh, that'll be the Bears' first tie on the season and their overall record will go to eight, four and one, four, two and one in conference as you see right there. So they got the win against Mountain View and uh, got the tie against Stillwater. Now switching, uh, I believe, to the boys, what are we doing here? Boys soccer, yep, we're going to boys soccer and I think we got a highlight as the, uh, the, well, we'll take a look at standings, sorry, okay, I'm all mixed up. Take a look at the standings first at the Metro East. So we're switching from girls suburban east to boys Metro East. 
Boys Metro East, no surprise, North St. Paul having a great year, 6-1, 12-3 overall. Matamidi as well, Class A team right there, 5-1. 11 and 2 overall. Matamidi's only loss coming to the 2A North St. Paul Polars. Now, North St. Paul has only lost to St. Thomas Academy. Hastings beat St. Thomas Academy. Got a whole big mess up at the top. But Matamidi and St. Thomas play each other in last game of the season. And I think if the Zephyrs can win that one, they'll at least get a share of the Metro East Conference crown. Okay, so that's Metro East standings. Now we're ready for Suburban East boys soccer and a highlight as. This was the later game after the girls played White Bear and Stillwater at Stillwater. Again, courtesy of Valley Access. And this Stillwater boys team is very good. That's Max Stafford, uh, Stauffer, excuse me, low driven shot, slow roller, gets Jeremy Beckler going the wrong way. And that's 1-0 Ponies. A little bit later, corner kick for Stillwater. This will bounce off a few players, but then Logan Huber will direct it towards net. And it'll be 2-0 to the ponies. Here's Spencer Scott with some fancy footwork. Eventually gets space for the shot, drives it low. You see all night, uh, low to Beckler's right, the balls were going in. He's a tall kid, basketball player, so I think Stillwater's smart to go low. Has a little bit of trouble going low. Another low shot off that turf too, really picks up speed on the turf. That was Spencer Scott again showing off the skills from the left wing. That will be the fourth goal for Stillwater. That would uh, be the end of all the scoring. Stillwater wins it 4-0. The Ponies, Ponies are ranked second in state. And they top the Bears there 4-0. Taking a look at those Suburban East standings, White Bear is now 1-5-1 in conference, 2-9-2 two, two overall. Stillwater undefeated at the top of the conference. But the Bears, hey, they'll have a great chance to pick up another conference win in their last game of the regular season as they go against Park of Cottage Grove tomorrow night. And you see Park there at 06-1 at the bottom of the conference. Okay, girls and boys soccer out of the way. Let's get to another fall sport. This one indoors on the court. That's right, volleyball. And we got the District 622 rivalry matchup. Saint North St. Paul 17-0 coming into this one. Starting at 5-8, but that record is a little misleading because this 5-8 and eight Tartan team is actually pretty dang good. And we'll see it right here. North St. Paul uh, actually fell behind early, early in this first set, but you can see they're kind of starting to open up the lead. We have a bit of a volley back and forth right here. Eventually will fall on the Tartan side, point to North St. Paul. So they increase their lead. Tartan kind of gets back into it there late set one, but set point right here. Can't be dug out on that far sideline in the first set goes to North St. Paul, 25-19. There's a look at that first set score. Now into the second set, North St. Paul starts out with the 7-3, well, I should say 8-3 lead after an unreturnable serve right there by Selena Rodriguez, nice ace. Now Tartan trying to mount a comeback down 10 after Selena Rodriguez hits it too lightly into the net, kind of try to change things up with a little fake there. Tartan's going to make a bit of a run, but they ultimately make too many mistakes at the net. As they try to be sneaky, that one falls. Faith Lobo can't get it over, 25-14. So North St. Paul looking like they might get the sweep after uh, winning that second set by even more. Into the third set, real close here. Now tied up at five early on. 8-6 now, Tartan leading here, set three. That one too hot to handle. And it'll be a 9-6 Tartan lead, set three. 10-9 now, Tartan. North St. Paul setting things up. That one blocked at the net, though, will fall in on the Tartan side, so the point will go to North St. Paul, all tied at 10s. Now we're all 19s. Here to 2019, as this one was really back and forth this third set. Like I said, uh, North cruises through the first two. This third set was a grind. Look at that serve, just gets over. Great dig by Rodriguez, but eventually it's blocked at the net. Another point to Tartan, they're 22-19, and they're starting to feel it. They think if they can win this third set, anything can happen. 24-23, they've got to get this point. They do, and you've got to love the elation from the young Titans team. We talk about this Titans team is very good. They're also pretty young, not a ton of seniors. A few juniors and a lot of sophomores, not only getting a lot of playing time, but doing really well. Outside hit there. Alexandra Lyle, that one just a little bit too long. She's a junior, but one of the top players in the Metro. Number two for Tartan. 
And it's set for North St. Paul. Didn't want this thing to go on any longer. You see they open up the lead to 19-7. And that'll be almost it. 23-11 right there. Things look done for Tartan. They did go on a run, as you see, 24-18. And unfortunately, the serve into the net is going to end the night for Tartan. Great effort by the Titans, but they do fall short to one of the best teams in the state uh, in North St. Paul. North St. Paul takes it three sets to one, and uh, I, don't, I don't know if we, I think we did mention this, but this is only the third set that, tar, uh, that North St. Paul, rather, had lost all year to this point. Not only were they undefeated, but they only dropped two sets the entire season. So great job by a young Tartan team to pull a set from this North St. Paul team, and I think this rivalry is going to be great uh, in the coming years, and these two teams might even see each other in section playoffs. It would be an awesome matchup. So we'll take a look at those standings. Well, we mentioned it, North St. Paul was undefeated. They did lose a non-conference game, so no undefeated regular season for the Polars. Uh, they lost a tournament game in Blaine, but uh, whatever. Get that monkey off your back heading into postseason. You know, that undefeated going to the postseason, so much pressure. So no pressure, ladies. Get the job done in the postseason. Get past sections. Get in that state tournament. Bring home that state title. Now, Tartan also having a nice year. That 5-10 and 10 record we said a little deceptive. They are very young and got great talent. We just saw it on display. And so this rivalry should be good, as I mentioned, uh, as the, uh, in the coming years and even maybe the coming weeks. Okay, now Suburban East Volleyball. Been, uh, you know, been a tough year for White Bear Lake. As you see, they are uh, near the bottom of the Suburban East standings. They're winless so far in conference, but they could turn things around against Mounds View on Thursday. You see Mounds View at two and three, only six and eight overall. So I like White Bear's chances on Thursday to get that first conference W. So I think that's all the highlights and standings that we got for you this week. Now I know this is normally John's segment that we're about to get into, but he isn't here. So I'm gonna have to take over for this week and the athletes of the week. So I had to go, you know, figure out who I'm gonna choose. We settled on a few things. We do have athletes of the week. The graphic is correct. It's time for it. And I guess I'll get into it. For the male athlete of the week, I have to head over to that White Bear Lake football team. I mean, a year or two ago, you'd never think that we'd be able to pick a White Bear Lake player for athlete of the week, but this year, they've got plenty. And we're gonna focus on one of them that really helped this thing turn around. It is senior Cooper Anderson, number 10, the quarterback. Now, this quarterback has led his team all season long, keeping the ball moving downfield. He had a huge game back on September 21st. We saw the highlights against Stillwater. They won at 37-21. Anderson posted 230 passing yards, went 12 of 16 in the air, and added a couple of touchdowns. This team finally has it together, and Cooper Anderson is a big reason why. And for your female athlete, I gotta, gotta, gotta talk about that North St. Paul volleyball team. We talked about them a little bit, but let's focus in on Lauren Stenman. Saw a couple of her highlights there. The junior outside hitter leads the team in kills. Now a team that doesn't have a ton of height, Lauren Stenman, 5'10", one of the taller ladies. This is basically her first year on varsity and she leads the team in kills. Been doing a great job. Now this is why this North St. Paul program is so successful year in and year out on the volleyball court. You got someone like Stemman who basically comes out of nowhere and is one of your team leaders. Kind of a lot, of, they're relying on a lot, not a lot of seniors this year. And Stenman's a big reason why they've been, you know, without the senior leadership, they're still 21 and one. So what an awesome job. Keep it going, Lauren. And congratulations on being uh, one of the athletes of the week. I think my friends, that will wrap it up. And that are your athletes of the week. Well, that's pretty much all we got for you, but we still got a little bit of time, so why don't we talk about some of our upcoming broadcasts. Now, the fall regular season starting to wind down, so this is basically our regular season broadcast that we know about, but of course, as section play gets going, we'll, we'll be out there for some of those broadcasts, so uh, keep yourselves posted to the website and of course, to Sports Path to know what games we'll be at and when you can find those, but uh, Friday, we got that Wiper Lake homecoming game against Woodbury. Should be a great one. I'll be down there, two four and one teams. Volleyball, North and Stillwater, that's another great one on the 11th and a tape delayed game. Mighty behind Tartan, we talked about that. All awesome games, got great games. I don't know what else you should be doing, but watching your Fab 14s right here on SCC Sports. This will do it for this episode of Sports Pass. We'll have another one for you on Monday. This one Monday, for some scheduling reasons, live seven 
October 15th. Well, I want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the 15th.